There are so many steps to build in and before we can start the metal siding, we need a platform to stand on. So out come the digger and the dumper. And then before we can start the wood siding, we need a concrete base to line it up to. So these are my two service pipes, water and electricity. It's all the small in-between tasks that take up all the time, but it all makes for a much needed job. And after all, this will be our new home and homestead. It's quicker. Yeah. Using our dustpan. Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees. And all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Right, the next part of the project is to create some concrete upstands between all the posts on the bottom. So we're going to talk about basically 100 millimetre high by the width of the post, which in this case it's 80 millimetres. Um, and that is to give a waterproof sort of protection from coming underneath any siding or anything like that. So the siding will come down and butt against it. So long I put it all together and now I'm taking it all apart. Right, quick little template just to mark off where I'm going to drill. It's only quick and easy just to keep it central in the lines. I'm going to do them every 20 centimetres. There's not going to be any stress on it, but I, I like tying stuff in. Coffee! No, no coffee! Work, work! Coffee time for Mr. Wright. Your coffee's ready. Too good to you. Because the uh, chemical goes off pretty quickly, I want to be ready with every single one so we can squidge, plop, tap, squidge, plop, tap all the way through.
Well, that seemed to work okay. We got them all in. I use that little block, so they're all at uh, 50 millimeters above. But we're going 100 with the uh, actual concrete. And then we've got the three over here. So once those have gone off, which won't be long, we'll uh, start putting the forms on around the bottom. Our neighbors, they've just um, finished erecting their big chicken coop and it's like a chicken party in there. They're all in there busy all morning, chattering away, giggling. <laughs> they're, they're really nice. Good morning. Whew, it is chilly today, minus four degrees centigrade. Um, right, I've come down early because we've just got so much to do at the moment. Um, I'm going to start doing the wood for the forms for the small op stands. So I'm going to cut them in half with a table saw, um, trim them down to the exact size, and then give them a plane on one side so it's nice and smooth. And hopefully that will give a nice finish. So uh, that's this morning's task. on clamp it by hand so I want to get this uh, block out and that should be okay now there could be movement that way but uh, I'll just stick my level up across there to there and that should check that for plumb there. Just gonna put it around the bolt. Just to keep it in place and up like that. And the concrete will hold that in place and then I'll just trim off the top. And I've got another one this end. This one I haven't got a little bolt, so I'm just gonna place him at the back of this clamp because I don't want him coming down onto the concrete. There we go. This little beast is becoming my new favorite uh, tool. So uh, as you saw on the, uh, the front when I did those first ones, um, I'm just nibbling out to get around these tabs and things like this on the metal bars on the uh, i beam So uh, here we go again. All right, let's see if that fits. I've got to clear a little bit because of this weld here. So I'll just take a little uh, smidge off there. Let's give it a go. That's better. See? Right flush now. Again, so I'd be able to clamp that and it's flush with the floor as well. That fits nice. So now I'll go and get my uh, spacer block and make sure this is 80. And then I'll be able to put some, um, a strap across the top. A little 80 spacer block. It's actually 79, I had to trim a millimetre off because these posts 
aren't exactly A to you for some reason. And then I have to use my spacer and one of these, so I'll just screw that one on first. Hopefully, when the sun comes out and melts the pipes, we'll be able to get some concrete done. Back to the dreaded concrete. There shouldn't be too much now though. You love cement. I think we'll have enough. Oh, yeah. It's the trouble these little amounts, it's hard to judge. next morning and uh, I've come I'm going to remove some of the forms as you can see on this little one it's, it's in the shade so it didn't get any sun yesterday afternoon or up to now and it's uh, sort of midday now bit of a late one this morning um, so I'm going to leave these forms on I don't really need that wood anyway because they're, they're quite small and the same with on the left hand side I'm going to leave that one the long side is in the sun um, I've got to remove at least one of those boards because I need to carry on the forms now around that small room. So uh, that's the job today. I want to get all of this, um, these little op stands finished today, um, basically so I can get on with the siding. So I knew it was going to happen, but my little straps left uh, little marks. But I'm thinking I should be able to get rid of that with a bit of a trowel and then just tidy up this bottom section here. Julie's just tidying up where the concrete upstand meets the uh, base. So it's um, where we vibrated it with the Ryobi drill and all the liquid came out the bottom. So that's a good, good thing. And it's just soft enough still, just yeah. to dust it off. It's, it comes off no problem, so it'll be tidy. Thank you. 
Now to go and cut 35 pieces of rebar. First time with the dumper and the digger at site. So uh, time to get them off and time to get them to work. Well, that's a pretty good load for the first test. A load of boulders. We haven't done much uh, filming actually with the, uh, the mini dumper and the mini digger, but uh, we're getting there. I'm just trying to form a platform up the top here because it's, uh, yeah, it's on a slope. It's pretty dodgy, um, but yeah, cutting out a platform because that will give me the level for me to then go behind and sort of straighten out all of this up here. But Julie, uh, Julie's getting used to the mini dumper now. So uh, it's making, uh, it's cutting the time in half because I don't have to keep stopping, but it's just run out of fuel. <laughs> so uh, she's just gone off. You can see her just leaving there to go and get the petrol can. No, you're getting it dirty, Joe. Battery change out on our battery coffee station. It's nice to actually be able to bring things and leave them here a little bit more. So these are my two service pipes, water and electricity. So these are going to be formed within this concrete upstand. 
which will uh, tidy it up a bit. So I put this tape on just to protect it when I poured the slab. If you remember, remember back, I cut through this uh, conduit with the, uh, the helicopter, the um, power trowel, and that's when I stopped using it. So it'll give me the opportunity to wrap some tape around and actually seal that in concrete again. And next step now is, as before, he's just cutting bits of foam to go over the, uh, the bolt in the corners of each post. It's just to give a little bit of protection for uh, the metal expanding and contracting. And then it's back to our favourite pastime, Ian. Mixing. Concrete! <laughs> Today. Yeah, well, we, we had a whole, well, two thirds of a bag open, so I just wanted to get as much. I didn't want to be short, so. Um, oh, we were a bit close yesterday. Yeah. So this was um, a full load plus two buckets of extra. Well, we'll dump it on our normal dumping ground, <laughs> <laughs> the car park. It's going all right. We're using the uh, the Ryobi there. Um, just wait for the the bubbles to sit ease, and then I'll go over again. But uh, yeah, it's looking okay. I've perfected the art of the shovel. It's quicker. And yeah, neater. Using our dustpan. Oh, it is tidier. Yeah, I don't spill any with this. Right, let's take these boards off first. I'll put these boards on uh, just in case of frost and that was right because uh, it was probably about minus two centigrade yesterday. Let's see what this is like. Oh. See if I can prise them off first. Oh, there's one. That doesn't look too bad. I'm going to carry on and take the rest off because uh, it's nice sunny days over the next couple of days. So that will give it a chance to all dry out and I want to smooth off these tops. If you see me a bit, a bit tentative today, yesterday when we were loading those big uh, boulders into the mini dumper, one of them was pretty heavy. And uh, as I placed it, I didn't want to throw it into the dumper, but as I placed it, it basically crushed my middle finger. I don't know whether you can see that, but uh, it is a little bruised and a very, very sore, I'm not sure. It's, well, it's just bruised, but I can't use it. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun today. I'm putting these bottom steels on now um, before we paint them because we need to leave the uh, concrete to dry for another week or two um, before we do paint it so all the moisture's out of it. But I'm putting these on, two things, one, to get them out of the way and also to protect this concrete because we have a tendency to... Uh, sneak underneath these and if we start catching our feet and things like that on, on these concrete strips uh, before they're fully cured I can only see them getting more damaged so getting on with these while Julie's at the uh, the quarry um, getting some uh, pea gravel for a second stage of French drainage. It also um, stops us bending under these and uh, knocking our head on the next one up every single time you just forget about it so hopefully now this will teach us to start using the actual doors because unless something blocks you here you seem to just walk straight through it and uh, oh i know we people have said we need hard hats and i think we've done and do 